Welcome to part six of the Media Composer Fast Start series. You made it to the final video. Well done. Now it's time to finish and output our sequences. So let's head back to Media Composer. Since our last session, I finished removing the color correction effect from the interview segments and added a couple of more time warp effects to adjust clip speed. So that's step one. Use the techniques we've covered to polish your sequence. Now let's add a title to our sequence. For Scramble King, let's build a lower third. So we'll continue working in the effects workspace and we can zoom in. Then we'll mark where we want our title to start and end. So we can press the I key to set it in and press O to set it out. Now we'll add our title to a new track so we can right click in the timeline, choose new, Video track. Let's make sure V2's monitor is active. And we can deactivate V1. Then we can click the Avid Titler Plus icon here in the timeline bar. Media Composer adds a title between our in and out and opens the Avid Titler Plus tool. Then we can click in the Effect Preview Monitor and type our first two lines of text. Then let's drag across the first line of text to select it, and then go to the Avid Titler Plus tool and format our text. Notice the options are similar to the other apps we format text in. Then we can drag across the second line of text and format that in the Avid Titler Plus tool. Now we're ready to adjust the title's position. So we'll click the Move tool. Then we can set Justification and Letting. And then position our text either here in the Effect Preview Monitor, or we can use these handy alignment buttons here in the Avid Titler Plus tool. Let's save this as a template. To do this, we'll head back to the bin container open our titles and graphics bin, then drag the Avid Titler Plus effect icon from the effect editor to the bin, and name our title. Let's use this template to create another title. So we'll go back to our timeline and set an in where we want it to start, and an out where we want it to end. Then we can drag our template from the bin to V2 between the in and out. If necessary, we'll reactivate Avid Titler Plus. Then double click the text in the Effect Preview Monitor and drag across. The text will change and make our changes. And then select the Move tool to make any further adjustments. And if we want, we'll save this title to the bin as well. Now let's finish our sequences by adding some fades and that graphic we linked to back in part one of this series. Let's have the title on V2 and video on V1 fade in. We can select both tracks, move the position indicator near the beginning of the title, press the quick transition button, and select starting at cut. 24 frames is fine for duration. My name is Emilio Hernandez. I now both the video and title fade in. Academy based out of Spring Hill, Tennessee. Next, let's zoom out and head to the end of our sequence where we'll add a graphic. Let's zoom back in and set an in and out to mark where we'll place it. Then activate the Edit Workspace and locate the graphic we linked to in part one of the series. 
This has an alpha channel, so it came in as a Mac key. So we'll load it into the source monitor, ensure only records ID2 is active, and overwrite. Then we'll head back to the effects workspace and adjust scaling. Then we'll adjust position. If you adjust position here in the effect preview monitor, you'll want to press delete to remove the keyframe that was automatically added. Let's add a drop shadow to help this stand out better. To access a shadow, we need to click this button which promotes our Mac key to a 3D Mac key. Now let's add a fade to this graphic. We'll move near the graphic start, click the quick transition button, type a duration, and click add. Then let's add a fade out at the end. We'll go to the end of our sequence, click the quick transition button, set position to ending at cut, set a duration, make sure both V1 and V2 are active, and then click add. Let's play this. Do enjoy the whole learning aspect. Like there's always something new. There's always something different to learn. Pretty good, just needs polishing. To polish our sequences, we can use any of the tools and techniques we've covered throughout this series. So we can trim, adjust some audio levels, or just tweak the titles, graphic, and fades we just added. So I'm gonna pause the recording to review and polish the Scramble King sequence. So I finished polishing the Scramble King using techniques covered in this series. I just have two more tweaks I thought you may find useful. First, the final shot is a bit long. So let's tighten the end by extracting some music. So I set an in and out using the waveform as a guide. The music track selected, so we could press extract or X on the keyboard. Then with the trim tool selected, shorten the graphic and video, adding control or command to snap it to the music. Then press the comma key once to trim the graphic one more frame. So it fades out completely. There's always something different to learn. Also, like many documentaries, this was shot with multiple camera formats. So some segments have a bar along the top and bottom and the rest don't. So let's add a mask to quickly make our entire sequence consistent. To do this, we'll right click in the record monitor and choose target mask and black mask. Then we'll set our setting by either going to file settings or using the keyboard shortcut. Then go to the Format tab and click Mask Margins. We can either choose a preset or type in a value. To create a minimal mask, let's enter 5% for both top and bottom. When we click Apply, it appears in the Record Monitor. Then we can close this and Settings. Now our sequence is consistent. We're ready to export it. To do this, we can select the tracks we'll output or press Ctrl or Command A to select all of them. And then add marks to select the region we'll output or press the T key to mark the entire sequence. Then we'll right click the record monitor and choose export. Let's name our file. Then we'll click options. So what do we choose? Well, it depends on where your story's headed. So we'll start by choosing an option here in the export as menu and choose options here based on how your sequence is set up. 
I like to use marks and selected tracks because what will get exported is visually obvious. Then select options based on your sequence's destination. For example, check this box to export the mask margins we just set up. And then I'm setting the rest of this up for YouTube or Vimeo. Once set, click Save, set the destination, and save. That's it. We can now review our export and repeat these steps if necessary. My name is Emilio By the Hernandez. way, this is I the final version of the Scramble King we included in your practice materials. With that, you've reached the end of this Fast Start series. Well done. Now, I imagine you'll want to revisit some of the topics covered in this series. Guess what? You don't need to build a project from scratch to review the techniques covered in videos two through six. That's because in the practice materials, we included a copy of the project and sequences I built throughout this series. If you followed the download and install video on avid.com or here in the MC practice materials, you can open the Fast Start Scramble King project and you'll find a bin with sequences that follow our progress. So for example, to review part five, you'll work with the Scramble King V3 sequence and practice the techniques covered in that video. This Edit From Anywhere Fast Start series just skims what's possible in Media Composer. So I encourage you to explore the Media Composer section of the Avid website for additional resources, tutorials, and course offerings. With that, thanks so much for joining me on this journey. Take care and happy editing. Thank you.